Hey, I think we can go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Maura Shu, and I'm one of the adult services librarians. And my co-host today is Emily Borsa. She wants to introduce herself. Hello, my name is Emily Borsa. I'm a collection services manager here at the library. Um, but I've been doing novelty with Maura for a long time. <laughs> so we're glad to have her. Her role at the library has changed, but she, um, of course, is still a huge reader. So I was happy to, to join us here today. So I'm going to, usually Emily is the driver of our Zoom. So I'm making my first attempt here. So I'm going to share my screen to show the, um, the flyer for today to cover the books uh, that both Emily and I are going to talk about. And then we'll each briefly uh, share uh, about the books. And at the end, everyone is welcome to also um, talk about any books that they may have been reading recently and also would like to share with the group. And I will take notes and message the group um, anything that you guys share so you don't have to you know, bother like having to jot down authors or titles. I'll email you afterward uh, so you can just um, to enjoy and listen. So I'm going to share my screen. must have closed my file that I needed. So we'll give me one second. <laughs> Let me try this again. Here it is. Okay. So you might need to move your, um, your video, oh, you know, your uh, little screen test, everybody over as you can see the screen. Um, but I'll also email this um, file to everyone um, as well. So I can go ahead and get started and talk about the first book um, on my list. So uh, my first book is called Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead. And this was a really big book, um, both in length and scope. Um, and it tells the intertwined journeys of an aviatrix born in 1914 and an actress who was cast to play her in a movie about her life a century later. After being rescued as infants from a seeking ocean liner in 1914, Marion Graves and her twin brother, Jamie, are raised by their uncle in Missoula, Montana. It's there after encountering a pair of barnstorming pilots passing through town in beat up biplanes that Marion starts her lifelong love affair with flight. And she, um, at that time, um, decides that her life's passion and her only goal is to become a pilot. And that decision shapes her life in very unexpected and dangerous ways. It also becomes her destiny as Marion decides to attempt to circumnavigate the globe by flying over the North and South Poles. Uh, so this story is told uh, alternating between characters. Um, and the other main character is Edley Baxter. Um, she has been familiar with the story of Marion Graves um, since she was a little girl, and this was before she became a pop culture phenomenon and turned into a movie star in a mega franchise. However, she accidentally destroys her career, and this movie is sort of her last chance to reinvent herself, and by playing Marion in the biopic movie. So Hadley's immersion in the character of Marion unfolds along Marion's own story, and the film is based at least partly on the logbook of Marion's Great Circle, which was her flight uh, where she wanted to um, fly over the North and South Poles. So this was an epic novel. It spans generations, continents, um, and it's very well researched. Okay. Uh, my first book is The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. Um, this one is historical and current. It alternates between the 18th century and um, today. And in 18th century, there's a woman named Nella and she owns an apothecary that specializes in remedies for women. But on the side, she has a business in poisons. And her only clients are women and the only poisons that she'll dispense are poisons that will be used against the oppressive men in their lives. So if it's a woman who wants a poison for a man, you're good, she's gonna help you. If you're a woman who wants to poison another woman, she won't. So it's only for the men. And Nella's getting on in age and in business, and she ends up with a 12-year-old customer who is actually working for her mistress, 
is not the 12 year old who needs the poison, but she made, her name is Eliza and she makes a fatal mistake. And that sparks a string of consequences that end up going through the centuries. In present day London, there's an aspiring historian named Caroline and she spends her 10th anniversary alone in London due to her husband's infidelities. She is wandering around London trying to find something to do and she wanders across um, a mudlarking expedition and she decides to join them and she finds a mysterious bottle in the river and she decides that she wants to investigate where this bottle came from and she a lot of the story is her going to the library and researching this bottle and working with the librarian and trying to find out maps of old, you know, 18th century England. And she ends up finding out and solving some mysteries that have been around since the 18th century and then have to do with Nella and the, apoth the lost apothecary. Um, it was a really good um, story that the history was good. And it's, you know, it's a good suspenseful, um, and unforgettable characters kind of book. It was really good. Okay, the next book on my list is Cozy Mystery, and it's called The Winds Are Not by S.J. Bennett. And uh, the book takes place in the not so distant past. Um, it's the early spring of 2016, and Queen Elizabeth is at Windsor Castle in advance of her 90th birthday celebrations. But the preparations are interrupted by the shocking and untimely get death of a guest in one of the castle bedrooms. The scene leads some to think that the young Rus Russian pianist strangled himself. The badly tied knot leads MI5 to suspect foul play. And when MI5 begins to question what? the household's most loyal servants, her majesty knows that they're looking in the wrong place. For the queen has been living an extraordinary double life ever since her teenage years as, as Lilibet where she secretly solves crimes while carrying out her royal duties. Because away from the public eye and unbeknownst to her closest friends and advisors, she has the most brilliant skill for solving crimes. With help from her assistant private secretary, Rosie Oshodi, um, the queen discreetly begins making inquiries into, uh, into the crime. And as she carries out her royal duties with her usual aplomb, no one in the royal world, the government, or even the public knows that the resolute Elizabeth won't hesitate to use her keen eye, quick mind, and steady nerve to bring a murderer to justice. And because she is the queen, no one will know that she is really the one solving the crimes. So this um, author really captured Queen Elizabeth's character and her voice with wit and charm. And we got a chance to see her in a way that she's rarely seen, kind yet worldly, decisive, shrewd, and most importantly, a superb judge of character. This is the first book in a new series and it's been described as The Crown Meets Miss Marple. So this was a really fun book if you're a fan of mysteries. My next book is The Godmothers by Camille Aubrey. Um, it starts in present day with new Nicole and her husband is applying for a new job with the government that requires background checks on their friends and family. Nicole feels that there might be something hidden in her family's past, so she goes to her godmother, Philomena, to ask her if there's anything that could prove detrimental. Philomena obliges, divulging a generational family saga rich with secrets, romance, and suspense. Philomena, Amy, Lucy, and Petrina are all members of the same affluent Italian family. They are all in-laws to each other. They married brothers, and they name each other as godmothers of their children. Their family is intricately linked within the community and the local crime bosses of Greenwich Village. Circumstances dealing with death and World War II have the husbands spread across the world while the women are left at home. Leased by the family and deep secrets of their past, the women handle the family business and its attempts to cut their ties with the mob. Aubrey uh, portrays her strong characters as intelligent, brave, and even ruthless women. It's historical fiction at its best, bringing along thrilling scenes, passionate love affairs, and a bounty of secrets. If you are anyway interested in The Godfather, it's a good book. And it has the women as lead characters, so it was very good. Okay, my next book is called The Plot by Jean Han Korolitz. And this is a novel set in the literary world of publishing and just about the life of an author. Um, the main character, his name is Jacob Finch Bonner, 
and he was once a promising young novelist with a respectably published first book. But that was a long time ago, and today he's teaching in a third-rate MFA program and struggling to maintain what's left of his self-respect. He hasn't written, let alone published, anything decent in years. As at one of these MFA uh, programs, he meets a student, probably his most arrogant to date, and the student's name is Evan Parker. And during one of their you know, one-on-one -on -one meetings where Jacob's board is supposed to use his you know, expertise as a published author to help this young student, uh, Evan tells him that he doesn't need Jake's help because the plot of the book that he has in progress is a, is a sure thing. And Jake is prepared to dismiss this boast as typical you know, amateur narcissism, but then he hears the plot of the book. And so then the MFA program ends and Jake returns you know, uh, back to his regular life and career as he's you know, trying to put out his, uh, the last book under his contract. And he's sort of waiting for this awesome book from Evan to get published. And he waits and it waits and it never comes out. And then he then digs a little deeper and finds out that his former student has died, presumably, presumably without ever completing his book. So Jake does what any self-respecting writer would do with a story like that, a story that needs to absolutely be told, and he writes the book himself. So in a few short years, all of Evan Parker's predictions about how his book will make him famous have come true, but now Jake is the author enjoying the wave. He's wealthy, he's famous, he's praised, and he's read all over the world. But at the height of his glamorous new life, an email arrives, which is sort of the first shot in what becomes a terrifying um, campaign, and the, the email says, you're a thief. So now Jake is struggling to understand his antagonist and hide the truth from his readers and his publishers about this threat and the fact that he's not the one that wrote this book. And so he decides to start researching Evan and sort of find out what really happened. So all throughout all of this, as he's researching the book, you're, le you're learning the plot of the story. Uh, you never hear about it until this point. You just hear that it's you know, this, just this awesome book. And so as Jacob starts to do this research, you begin to realize, you know, just how scary um, the plot really was and how we got the, and how Evan got the idea in the first place. So this was a thriller and it was, you know, an interesting insight into, um, into the world of publishing and, and, and the writer's mindset. So um, that was the plot by, by Coralix. When was that book published? I've, I've seen, it seemed like I've read that book. Um, it just came out earlier this year. Was it a republish? I don't believe so. Oh, then I must have read it last year then. Maybe. I don't have the exact publication date, but I know it's still something that's, you know, a, a sort of a higher demand book. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sure. Now we have The Survivors by Jane Harper. She's also the author of The Dry, which was very popular when it came out. Um, her novels take place in Australia, um, and we have Kiernan Elliott, who returns home to his family's, returns to his family's home in Evelyn Bay, and he soon finds himself enveloped in mysteries of the devastating ramifications of a historic storm that ravaged the town 12 years earlier. Among the casualties of the storm was Kiernan's brother Finn, who died attempting to rescue Kiernan after he decided to foolhardily visit some caves on the shore that went underwater um, during the storm. And he was there, you know, just fooling around and playing around and had a, you know, there was a girl with him. Um, and he always felt guilty that his brother had died trying to rescue him. Um, there was an, also a young girl that Karen knew that also went missing during the storm and only her backpack was ever found. The locals still mark the dreadful date of the storm and many remain unable to leave the tragedy behind. As Kiernan comes back, um, he's only back a day when the body of a young waitress is found on the beach and the trauma takes them all back to the storm. It rekindles all sorts of resentments from the past and they play out dangerously on social media and people are blaming each other, it's a small town. People are getting, you know, they're like, don't go to that restaurant. This person works there and he's somehow involved and people are just slamming each other left and right. Um, it's, hold on a second, where's, okay. 
soon um, things start to slowly come into light. It's kind of a slow burn of a story. Um, things start coming up and mysteries start getting solved. Um, there's a lot of characters um, in the story that you get to know and about their past and what they had to do again with this tragic storm. Um, and she does, the author does a great job wrapping everything up. Um, and you do find out all the good answers that you were looking for throughout the story, which are a mystery that I personally like because I like things to be answered. Um, but it's with the, the setting and the beach and the shoreline and the mystery of the people um, and the investigation behind it, it was just a really good novel. Okay, um, the uh, final book that I'm talking about um, right now is called Blush by Jamie Brenner. And uh, this book is actually dedicated to Jackie Collins and Judith Krantz, um, which was fitting because this is a multi-generation novel in the same vein as the sprawling family epics of the 80s written by these authors. And their books play a major role um, in inspiring the women that we meet in Blush. So a book refers to um, three generations of Hollander women who are gathered at their family winery for the annual summer reunion and learn that this might be the very last year where they get to celebrate the harvest. Be uh, because unknown to them, the Leonard Hollander, uh, their stubborn um, father and grandfather has refused to accept the modern trends and a result can no longer keep the winery in business. So Vivian Hollander is the matriarch of the family who has largely accepted the stay-at-home role, a uh, stay-at-home mother role over the years, um, but is completely blindsided by this news that the winery that she helped build from scratch is now in di dire financial straits and must be sold. Uh, their daughter, Leah Hollander Bailey, uh, she herself owns a successful cheese shop in New York City, but always wanted to be a part of the family winery. Despite great knowledge and love of the business, Leah's father chose, chooses her brother to work alongside him. So when Leah learns about the fate of the winery, she decides that this is her last chance to exert some influence and try to save the winery. Sadie is the granddaughter and daughter, an aspiring writer who has lost her inspiration for her senior thesis. She, while visiting the winery during this last harvest, she discovers a secret journal detailing her grandmother's romance book club from the 80s and begins to read these trashy novels along with Leah and Vivian. They then begin to use the characters in Jackie and Judy's books as examples of the strong women that they wanna be in order to stand up to Leonard and save the winery. So if anybody was a fan of you know, those books back in the eighties, uh, this would be you know, a fun sort of flashback. And it also was really you know, eye-opening um, you know, because some of those books were sort of looked down upon but actually they had really strong female characters and really, you know, sort of were blazing the path for, um, for books that we enjoyed today. My last one is The Showgirl by Nicola Harrison. Um, her, we start with Olive McCormick and she leaves behind all her secrets in Minnesota when she travels to New York to make it big on Broadway. Using her talents and her sass, she changes her name to Olive Shine and impresses Mr. Zigfield of the Zigfield Follies. Becoming a Zigfield showgirl was a dream that Olive followed to New York City. She's independent and successful and she takes on the city and all it has to offer to the new age girls of the late 1920s. Reeling readers in with descriptions of glamorous stage performances and racy sparkly costumes, Harrison keeps you hooked in her story. Late night, admiration and applause are all Olive needs in life until she meets Archie Carmichael. Falling in love with the wealthy and progressive Archie, Olive wonders if there's more to life than just performing. Settling down to be a wife will mean revealing the secrets of her past. And she, she decides if she can be both a wife and a stage performer. It's full of surprises and romance and it keeps readers turning the pages awaiting Olive's fateful future. If you read Elizabeth Gilbert's City of Girls, mm -hmm. and even if you liked it a little, you'll really like this one. I liked I liked City of Girls, but I liked this one even better. Carolyn, I think you'd like this one. I'd like that one. Okay. I think so. Mark that and The good. Godmothers too. They're both some good history. My kind of books, okay. Yeah. Hey, and I'm just gonna scroll 
down a little bit more. Um, share my screen a little bit here. Um, usually, you know, on the handout on the back page, we share a couple of other reads. Um, and these books went along with our summer reading theme of reading books set in other places and focusing on other cultures. So um, Emily and I haven't read all of these books, but they're books that are currently um, out right now and uh, definitely fit our summer reading theme. Uh, so the first one is called Island Queen by Vanessa Riley which is a historical novel based on the true life story of Dorothy Kerwin Thomas, who um, rises from slavery to become one of the wealthiest and most powerful landowners in the colonial West Indies. Then we have 50 Words for Rain by Asha Lemmy, um, abandoned by a mother who instructs her never to fight or ask questions, an illegitimate, can't even say that word, illegitimate child of mixed heritage in 1948 Kyoto forges a powerful bond with her older half-brother against the wishes of her formidable grandparents. And the last book, um, this is one that I was able to read an advanced copy of. It's called The Reading List. Um, it's coming out any day now. Um, it's by Sa Sarah Nisha Adams. And this was a first um, novel by this author. And it was a heartwarming tale about a chance, it's set in a library. I'm always a sucker for a book um, about libraries and librarians. And it's a, about how a chance encounter in a library um, and how a, a list of library books helps forge an unlikely friendship between two very different people in a suburb of London. So that's the reading list. And so I will definitely email everybody a copy of this flyer. And at this time, if anybody has read, been reading anything this summer um, or since the last time we met that you wanna share with the group, we would love to hear about it. And I'll take notes and include that in my follow-up email. I'm reading a very interesting book that's part of the book box program. Someone picked out The American Dirt for Me by Janine Cummins. I'm about a third away through the book. It is a great read. It's on Oprah's list. Uh, I don't want to give too much away from it. It's things about what we know what's going on today. But this writer has put you that you are the person. I just love the way this is written. I am a mother there with my child fleeing, trying to get to safety with a cartel after me. So it's a good read. I wanna recommend that for anybody who wants to read it. It really explains what's going there, but you become that character in the book, the way it's written. The descriptions are so good. I liked that book a lot too. Yeah, me too. That was a very popular book before it even came out among like booksellers. We had Anderson's bookshop in to do um, a program for us and they were talking about it to us and telling us how we had to read it and how great it was and how everyone at the bookshop had already read it. So it's a good one. It's a real good one. And it's a fast read, even though it's about 400 pages. Mm -hmm. It's a fast read. And I have a couple others I was reading too. Can I find them? I just finished Nora Roberts' Legacy too. I like that one. It was a different kind of love story involved with it, but it was it was different. It took us into this. I want to say, is it HBO or Apple? One of them with this exercise phenomena thing that's coming on TV. But it's about Andrea Russo, who is a character that at seven years old, her father uh, wants to kill her because she's illegitimate with an affair that he had with his student. And it comes out that he was a very prolific person in that department when he taught having affairs each year or every couple of months with a different student. And, and she was the mishap of it and how it destroys his life. He comes after the mother they become successful with a billion dollar business in these exercise videos. So it takes you into this world um, where you don't know, I didn't know too much about it, but to take this in this world, what it takes to be a person and the sacrifices that you have to do every day just to keep in shape and keep thinking and, and making friends and promoting yourself and putting yourself out there. So that was interesting. I, I enjoyed reading that one. I thought it was pretty good. And the uh, Nor Roberts, the name of his legacy, and it, it is a new book. This just came out. 
Anyone else reading anything to recommend lately? I recently read um, The Song of Achilles, which I guess is pretty popular. So there's a chance that you've already read it or heard of it at least, but um, I would recommend that to anyone. It's a retelling of um, the, during the Trojan War, Achilles' whole story. Um, and it just like, the it was some of the most beautiful, it might be the most beautiful writing I've ever read. And um, I thought that the, the like humanity behind the myths was brought out so well that you felt so connected to these people who are typically bland and you know um you've heard the story a million times and so you can't imagine that they're actually people but it feels you feel so connected to the characters and um it's the the female characters are brought out so strongly that you you get this kind of um like subversively feminist perspective in this time where clearly women were um, at a great disadvantage during the war. And it just, oh, it was just so beautiful. And so I haven't read Circe yet, her Madeline Miller's next book, but I have that on my list because um, this was one of the best books I've ever read. Yeah, those are both supposed to be really good. They're on my list. I haven't gotten to them yet, but mm -hmm. everyone loves them when they come out. They're all so excited. Yeah. We just had to reorder Song of Achilles because it has gotten really popular again. You know, that was the first book and it's really had a huge resurgence. So um, it's, I'm glad to hear that you liked it. Mm -hmm. I think it's because of social media that it started coming back because I think on That's TikTok what I or about. something, it's been, yeah. <laughs> it's been making the rounds. But right. Yep. So deservedly so. Yeah. Oh, good. Nobody else is reading. God, that's all I ever do now is read. <laughs> Sometimes they're not all winners, unfortunately. I, so. That is so true. That is so yeah. true. They're not all winners. I did read another one too that I thought was was a good good one. But you know, you gotta like mystery. So it's called The Disappearing Act by Catherine Stedman. Have any of you read that one? Mm -mm. I just finished that one. Uh, it's a relationship gone bad in England. She's an actress of some variety and she's going to LA for a pilot. And when she's there for this pilot, she's also interviewing for other programs that are in LA trying to advance her career. Even though she is a successful actress in London, uh, well, she meets this other lady and a whole big mystery starts at this one audition she goes to it's a mystery she disappears and how she follows this lady trying to figure out what happened to her and this is where the plot gets all mixed up and back and forth and convoluted but it's very good not many characters in there to follow so that's what i like too so it's pretty straightforward on your characters you got about six characters in the whole book um, I thought it was really well done and well written and it's a good mystery to the end when you finally find out what's going on. Well, I'll recommend another book that I read recently because I'm sure I, by the time we have novelty again, it will be a little older. Um, but it's a newer historical fiction and it's called Mary Jane. And I'm trying to I'm trying to look really quick the name of the author. It's Jessica something. And so it's historical fiction, but it's historical fiction, let's like I said, in the 60s, I believe. And um, it is about sort of a coming of age novel. Um, it's about a young girl from a very you know, tight laced um, family who becomes a nanny for a family in town um, who is much more free spirited. And the big twist of the novel is that the, um, the father, um, um, and, and the house where she's babysitting is a psychiatrist. And uh, Mary Jane is sworn to secrecy that he's about to have one of his more famous clients come living with them uh, because he's trying to help him uh, get over um, his drug addiction. And I believe from what I can tell, it's based on Cher and Greg Allman from the Allman Brothers is the couple that comes to live with them. And so it just really like, opens up Mary Jane's world and just, you know, 
uh, being surrounded, it, it going from her like close to uh, where she's nannying and she falls in love with a little girl. And it was just, I don't know, I really liked it. So if you like historical fiction, but need a break from the World War II stuff, this was, this was a good one. So I've got one um, that you guys might've talked about and it may not be for everyone, but I really enjoyed it. It was um, uh, Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. Um, and it's kind of science fiction, um, but it's about a time when parents um, buy for their children artificial friends. So these are robots who, um, you know, you have a sort of a best friend who's your robot, a robot who's your best friend. And those robots are, they're learning as they go um, because that's what robots do um, with artificial intelligence. And so Clara is actually, the artificial friend and you see um, the world and relationships um, through the eyes of this artificial friend who's learning as she goes. Um, and I enjoyed that. Um, and one thing I'm reading right now, which is nonfiction, is called The Biggest Bluff. And um, I don't have it right here, so I don't have the author, but it's it's um, a writer, uh, a, sort of a well-known writer who decides to take a year to learn the game of poker and try to compete um, at the highest level. And so it's about her, her sort of learning experience about the game of poker. Um, and it's, it's a good read. Awesome, thank you for sharing. Like the title. Yes. Bluff. Okay, well, if, any, if there is to share, we wrap this up and I have everybody's email addresses and I will um, send you the file um, of my screen that I shared today. And I'll also include all the books that we talked about uh, this afternoon. So thank you so much to everybody. I know we'll have to do another novelty um, in fall, hopefully in person, it's not, but um, we'll be finding that out soon, so. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.